success is not final failure is not fatal it's courage to continue that counts i have started my motion capture suit development journey with bno 055 imu sensor and raspberry pi then i moved to arduino nano and so far i am sticking to esp32 as my microcontroller unit for bno 055 During this journey of the development I thought I will get the ready made data out of BNO055 Unfortunately I had to choose the hardest path to implement the sensor orientation measurement from scratch So far I have learned what is accelerometer and how does it works how to measure approximate tilt based on raw accelerometer data and how low pass filter can be used to denoise unwanted signal produced by accelerometer Things are getting more and more complicated and i am kind of stuck at this moment with current evolution of sensor orientation using accelerometer data only therefore i have decided to move on from accelerometer sensor to gyroscope to complement the accelerometer outcome and make an error proof solution using sensor fusion and my today's topic is gyroscope what it is and how does it work first i will deep dive into the basic concept then i will move into the sensor fusion I will be using the same source code from where I left in the last episode. If you have not watched the previous video, please check the description below. You can also visit my Patreon site to read the complete paper and download the source code. So, without any further delay, let's dive into it now. If you are new to this channel, please consider to give a like and subscribe. That means a lot to me. As for the specification of IMU or inertial measurement unit, a gyroscope gives angular velocity vector, the three axes of rotational speed in radians per second. Now, what is a vector and what is a rotational speed? A vector is what is needed to carry the point A to the point B. That means a vector has magnitude in terms of size or quantity and direction. Vectors are represented by a small arrow on the top. An example would be force, velocity, acceleration, momentum and so on. Say if I apply a force to a mass or an object, then it will move to a direction at a certain velocity. And if more force is applied, the mass will move faster. More force means change in velocity and acceleration which is newton's second law of motion force proportional to acceleration or force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration to the direction the object is moving with a velocity represents as momentum if velocity increases momentum also increases and if velocity is constant momentum will also be constant say a car weighing 500 kg moving at a speed of 60 km per hour and hits a pole the damage will happen to the pole is much lesser than a car hits to the pole weighing 2000 kg and moving on same speed of 60 km per hour the difference between these two car is the weight which is causing more damage to the pole this means the force applied by the heavy weight car is higher than the smaller car though the car speed was same the generated force caused by the damage is different please note the force exerted by the car to cause damage is is not the force which was applied to increase car's velocity this force is momentum here you can see these players are trying to break the door by hitting a heavy cart or object with a fixed weight although they are able to generate the force or momentum by increasing the velocity but it is not enough to succeed more players more power helped generating more velocity of the cart and that helped increase of momentum and finally causes more damage momentum is a force that exists in a moving object which is calculated by multiplying its mass or weight with its velocity or speed momentum is also represented by p so p is proportional to velocity as mass is constant or weight is constant so momentum is equal to weight multiplied by velocity more velocity means more momentum in this case the cart or the object was moving in straight line hence the momentum is also known as linear momentum momentum and it has a direction so it is a vector 
there are two more terminologies i have mentioned velocity and acceleration what is the difference velocity and speed both are same thing is the measurement of a mass displacement over time assuming a object is moving at a speed of 50 km per hour that signifies the object has traveled 50 km in last 1 hour here the time interval between the measurement is 1 hour say from the last measurement to the next measurement, measurement the object has travel another 60 km then the velocity will be 60 km per hour although the object has moved in total 110 km velocity is a measurement of the fact which indicates the latest truth on the measured reality and the truth will continue unless the next measurement rectifies it to extend further on third measurement say the mass has moved another 20 km at that point its velocity will be 20 km per hour but in total the distance has traveled by the object in 3 hours is 130 km in a nutshell velocity is measured after a fixed interval of time normally in seconds and adjusted if it is not deviated now we can ask can velocity be negative No, velocity will always have either zero when the object displacement is zero or positive value. Now, how can we track the increase or decrease of velocity at a given time? Say we measure the travel distance at every second in an unit, could be kilometer or mile. At first second, the object has traveled 10 units, so the velocity will be 10 per second. At next second, the object has traveled another 10 units, so the velocity is still 10 per second change in measured velocity between the interval will be zero after another second the object has traveled another 20 unit so the velocity will be 20 per second change in velocity in this case will be positive 10 moving further after next interval the object has traveled further 20 units means velocity is still 20 per second and change in velocity in this case is zero let's make it little interesting in the next reading where the mass has traveled only 5 units then the velocity will be 5 per second and change in velocity will be minus 15 because the velocity has dropped from 20 per second to 5 per second here i am measuring two facts which has happened in specific time interval one is velocity which is a measurement of the distance per second and another one is change in velocity per second this is called acceleration both the measurements are based on the fact in a specific time interval however the value of the velocity will always be positive or zero and acceleration could be positive negative and zero acceleration measurement unit is the delta velocity per second as the velocity is measured per second hence the acceleration unit will be per second square if velocity is measured in terms of units say meter kilometer mile inches then acceleration unit will be meter kilometer mile or inches per second square as the measured distance is based on a straight line therefore they are also known as linear velocity and linear acceleration a vector has a magnitude in terms of size or quantity and direction that means both velocity and acceleration will have a specific direction based on the number type in terms of positive or negative and hence they are also known as linear velocity vector and linear acceleration vector till now i always have said or mentioned earth gravity or the g measurement is always 9.8 meter per second square at earth's surface this is an acceleration measurement if we drop an object from a skyscraper the earth's gravity will pull that object down it means a force which is continuously pulling the object down now as the object is traveling down it will have a velocity and a momentum towards the earth more distance the object will travel more pull force will apply means momentum will increase we understand that acceleration is change in velocity in this case the velocity will always increase due to the continuous attraction force exerted by the earth which increase the momentum if we measure the delta velocity while the object is traveling down the acceleration value will get constantly 9.8 mathematically this can be proved as per newton's law force is equal to mass 
multiplied by acceleration and the gravitational force with which an object is attracted to the earth is also formulated by Newton's universal law of gravity which states force is equal to g multiplied by earth mass multiplied by object mass divided by distance square. The big G is Newton's gravitational constant and gives the constant of proportionality in Newton's universal law of gravitation which is the basis of our understanding of non-relativity gravity. In SI unit G has the value 6.67 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square. Considering the earth is a sphere then the distance from the center to its surface is 6.38 multiplied by 106 meter a typical earth radius value. From these two equation we get mass multiplied by acceleration is equal to big G multiplied by earth mass or weight multiplied by object mass divided by distance square and hence acceleration is equal to big G multiplied by earth mass divided by distance square. The above equation demonstrates that the acceleration of the gravity is dependent upon the mass of the earth which is approximately 5.98 multiplied by 1024 kilogram and the distance that an object is from the earth center is earth radius. If we put all the values then we will get the acceleration which will be around 9.8 meter per second square and of course the value of the g will change as an object is moved further from the earth center. For instance if an object were moved to a location that is twice of earth radius from the center of the earth which is approximately two times of earth radius which is 6.3 multiplied by 106 meter then a significantly different in value of the g will be found at twice the distance from the earth the value of the g will become 2.45 meter per second square to wrap up a force is a strength or energy as an attribute of physical action or movement which impacts mass momentum both force and momentum are evaluated by size in terms of quantity and direction momentum causes displacement which are measured by velocity and gain or loss in velocity are measured by acceleration. All these four attributes momentum, force, velocity and acceleration are vectors. All these four attributes have a specific directions and these directions is signified by a straight line. Now let's say an object is hanging from a point by a rope and I apply a force such a way that instead of going in a straight line the object started rotating around the point in a circular path. Though the object is trying to go in a straight line tangentially to the circular path but the traction of the rope is continuously changing its direction. If I notice it then I can say the linear velocity vector's direction is perpendicular to the pull force and it always be. Unlike the linear motion here pull is always active and if no other force is applied to keep the momentum the object will slowly come down to its center. Such pull force is called centripetal force. Here you can see when the straight force is applied to the rope the hook hasn't reached to the destination. But after a couple of rotation player managed to generate some force to hook it to the beam. Now where from the extra force generated and why it has gone in a straight line? When the object is moving in a circular path, its momentum and velocity vector's direction is always pointing to a straight line which is continuously changing due to the rope's traction or the centripetal force. When the force is removed, it follows the path where it was supposed to go. Now after a couple of rotation, the additional force imposed on the object due to the centrifugal force. As per Newton's third law of motion, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We have experienced this scenario every time when we are in a vehicle and the vehicle is trying to take a turn with a similar velocity. We feel an outward force is always pushing us away from the turn which is directly opposite to the center or perpendicular to the direction. That force is called centrifugal force. This is an apparent force not a real one 
which is acted upon in such scenarios only. Our goal is not to determine the centrifugal force. Say the object is continuously moving in a circular path, then like linear velocity measurement, how can I evaluate the velocity of the object where the distance is an arc of the circumference? Well, I have two problems here. Problem 1. After a full rotation of the object in a circular path, the net displacement or the travel distance is zero. If my time interval to measure the velocity is greater than the time taken by the object to perform a full rotation, the velocity calculation will be problematic unless I keep track of the distance separately. Another problem is if I try to increase the radius or the size of the rope and try to do the full rotation at the same time, I need to apply more force as the travel distance is increased. Now if I add two objects on the same rope keeping some distance and make a full rotation, then applying a same force both objects will complete the different length at the same time. In this case momentum theory which is p is equal to m multiplied by v which is the velocity theory will be problematic to prove unless we prove closure object has more momentum than other one. Say the object made a full rotation in time t where the length of the rope is r which is radius. Then the velocity after a full rotation will be 2 pi r divided by t. As the distance of the rope is r, then the length or the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. To avoid the problem 1, instead of calculating the net displacement by the distance traveled by the object, if we calculate the angle displacement traveled by the object. Though I need to keep track of the angle, but I do not need to keep track of all the objects travel distance, which are tied up in the same rope at the same time at a fixed distance. Let's find out how can I calculate the angle first. For that, let me cut a small pi out of the circle with the arc length same as the radius. Let's say this angle created between the radius is theta and call the measurement unit as radian or identify it as one radian. If we say 1 radian is equal to r, which is the arc of the small pi, as the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, then the total angle of the circle in terms of radians will be 2 pi. And you can see the 2 pi is equivalent to 360 degree. If the object travels half circle or 180 degree, then in terms of radians, it will be 180 multiplied by 2 pi divided by 360, which is pi radians. Similar way, if I get radian, we know what angle it is. From the equation, you can see radian is not dependent on the circle. It means if it is a bigger circle and to travel more radians or angle, more force is required. This this way of calculating the velocity is called angular velocity. We got the first clue of gyroscope where specification says a gyroscope gives angular velocity vector the three axes of rotational speed in radians per second. We know the velocity is a vector and it has a direction. Now where is the angular velocity vector is pointing to? Angular velocity is represented as omega. Omega is equal to delta theta divided by delta t, where theta is the angle distance over a time interval t. Let me create a straight line through the center perpendicular to the circular path and consider the straight line as axis. Center of the interaction is zero. Then can we measure the direction of the angular velocity to consider it as vector? I rotate the object clockwise to measure the velocity and consider the direction of the velocity toward the right side of the straight line. Similarly, if I rotate anti-clockwise, then the direction will be on the left side. This also can be illustrated as right hand rule. That means I hold the axis with my right hand and rotate the fingers to the direction of the motion of the rotating body. Then the thumb will point the direction of the angular velocity and the direction direction the velocity is pointing to will be the direction of the angular momentum which is also a vector. If we apply more force to rotate faster, velocity will increase and so as momentum. Both these two vectors now have a direction and we can find it. 
Now if I manage to keep track of the velocity at a certain moment then I can calculate the acceleration as well which will be angular acceleration. Rest everything will be same like linear like before. Now let's look at the data I am getting from BNO055 via gyroscope vector measurement. To do that I have added vector gyroscope in my code and captured in a variable called GYR. I also have printed three axes XYZ of the gyro to the serial plotter. From the data I could see initially when the device is resting in a flat surface there is no or negligible angular velocity detected on all the axes. If I lift the y axis there are some velocity detected on x axis and similarly if I lift x axis velocity detected in y axis. The same way rotating the sensor on the flat surface is giving me data on z axis. Interesting to observe if I rotate the device fast acceleration amplitude or the peak increases. It means more angular velocity is detected. Same can be observed in other direction as well. This is now making lot of sense as more force means more velocity. Question is why there are some velocity detected when the device is at rest and no force applied to it. Simple answer is there is a constant force being applied by the earth gravity which is causing a continuous displacement of the angular distance and impacting angular velocity. Using the velocity let's calculate the angle or the travel distance which I can use to approximate the tilt or inclination measurement. Although this measurement will not be perfect but it will give me some estimate and then we can compare that with accelerometer driven tilt approximation. To do that I need to introduce a time variable and measure the time difference to measure the velocity change. The specifications say angular velocity measurement is on 100 hertz and our loop is running on 100 milliseconds. So between loop I am expecting a near precision of the angle displacement. As angular velocity omega is equal to delta theta by delta t then angle theta which is angle or angular distance will be omega which is angular velocity times measure time. In the code I have declared couple of variables time previous to store the previous time in millisecond time difference to evaluate the difference in time theta g x axis direction and angle distance. As it is gyro theta I have called theta g. In the setup function I have initialized the time previous variable at the startup time. In the loop I have evaluated the time difference based on the previous time and current time in milliseconds and then converted to seconds. Please note to convert integer to float I need one parameters data type to be float else output will be integer. Hence while dividing by 1000 to convert to second I just made it to float by 1000.0 and then reset the previous time to the current time. Finally apply the formula to evaluate the theta. As the object is moving then the new measured angle should be added up to the old angle. After printing the data in the serial plotter what I could see is when I am lifting x axis or the north side gyro is reporting the angle displacement in negative side of y axis. Lifting north means anti-clockwise rotation. My west side of the y axis is positive and hence angular velocity is pointing to the negative side of the y axis which is a correct behavior. Similarly lifting the other side or the south side of the sensor the rotation is clockwise and hence positive is pointed. As per right hand rule the behavior here is observed per expectation. Now let me do a full 360 degree turn to see what the angle is evaluated. The output looks awesome. If I remember correctly this behavior can compensate the acceleration 89 degree problem. Now it's time to test the vibration. From the result I can see there is no angle displacement which caused due to the vibration. It is responding steadily. Before I start analyzing further let me implement some logic for phi or to evaluate the y axis. Same like theta g I have created created a variable called phi g and the implemented formula to determine y axis angle displacement and plotted in serial plotter. Here when I am lifting the y axis or the west side the reported angular velocity is positive x axis. It means rotation is anti-clockwise so as per the right hand rule the positive direction of x axis is impacted which is perfect and similarly lifting east side is showing negative x axis. If I switch both theta and phi on then at least for two axes it is correctly reporting the orientation. Does this means I can estimate the orientation only using gyro? 
looks like yes. Before I conclude, let me try the vibration test. Here I can see the issue related to the wrong inclination angle due to the vibration is not there with gyro. Let me switch on both accelerometer outcome and gyro outcome at theta level and compare. To align the angles with accelerometer output and the gyroscope, I have made the small changes in the code in theta g calculation. The reason is simple, considering the fact the object is always moving in clockwise, hence instead of addition I am subtracting to our direction. After uploading the sketch, here is the output. I can see how fast Zyro is reacting to the inclination in comparison to the low pass filter of the accelerometer output. Angular velocity calculation is based on angle displacement. Due to the continuous force being applied by the earth gravity, gyro data will slowly deviate from the reality. However, this is logical. I have kept the device for 24 hours to see the outcome of the gyro data. And what I have found, the gyro estimated angle displaced are quite long from the reality. This means we cannot only trust gyro data. We have to use accelerometer data and fuse it with the gyro data to get a nice and clean outcome. This process is called sensor fusion. Before that, I need to understand how gyro works and how it is implemented in IMU sensors, particularly in BNO055. It means more research and more learning ahead and of course in next topic. So what I have done today in this episode is, I have learned linear and angular motion, velocity, acceleration, momentum and force along with the vector and how this data can be used to determine the angle displacement or calculate the orientation. Once I got the understanding, I have started looking at the gyro data. After plotting the data in the serial plotter, I have found there are some issues in the reported data. For that, I need to understand how gyro works so that I could use the gyro data to fix acceleration filtered output. The next episode is about gyroscope understanding and correct the gyro output data in terms of orientation and accuracy. After that, if time permits, I'll try to use the data to fix accelerometer outcome by using sensor fusion algorithm. As you know, I'm also learning and my resources are either Google suggested research paper or YouTube suggested video on the topic. Based on the time spent on the learning last few weeks, I have made this video to demonstrate my learning. I might be wrong or not able to explain properly in some case. In that case, please do not dishearten and hate me for that. If you could point out the problems, please comment and help me to rectify it. On that note, I am finishing this video here. I hope you like the process and the strategy of the development. Please stay tuned for such interesting topic and the solution. Till then, stay safe, take care and thank you for watching.